At Tucson Medical Center, universal protocol and the procedural safety checklist provide a final safeguard against harming patients from medical mistakes that can be avoided. There's nothing more important to our organization and to the patients we serve than making sure that we can provide them with safe care. TMC Senior VP and Chief Operating Officer Dave Ressler is asking every physician to commit to this process for every patient during every procedure, every time. This is just about hardwiring and it's about consistency and, and having a dependable process that we all follow. These are complicated systems that we work in. We work quickly and um, redundancy is important to prevent mistakes. We need to have checks and balances to make sure that we don't make mistakes. Pima Heart Cardiologist Dr. Pete Spooner demonstrates what the checklist realistically looks like. First, confirm the appropriate staff members are present. Next, use a two-patient identifier. Can you tell me your name and date of birth? Uh, Gary Brockla, 81544. Okay, and we're just going to confirm your medical record number here, Diane. And our policy Five, two, is that we three, check two, the medical nine, record number uh, and the patient name. And in the event that we are uh, confirming with the patient, they frequently don't know their medical record number, and so we ask for their name and date of birth. Well, in the case of children uh, or babies that are not able to communicate, um, they don't know. So in those cases, it's really important that we utilize the paperwork and their ID band to make sure that we have the right patient. We do a, a cardiac catheterization or coronary angiogram. The third step, confirm the procedure and the correct site or side. Make sure the necessary equipment is ready to go. Go over the patient's allergies and risks. And perhaps most importantly, take a time out. It ensures there aren't any mistakes. You know, you've got the right patient, the right procedure. If you don't stop to make sure that we, everybody is on board and that we all understand that we're, what we're about to do and that we have everything we need to do it, um, then we haven't created that opportunity for somebody to speak up. Physicians have an obligation to foster an environment where every team member feels comfortable speaking up. It's about communication and you want to be able to allow your, uh, your team to really work as a team and to communicate as a team. And uh, so it's important to engage them and for them to be part of the process. As Dr. Spooner demonstrated, the entire process I'll takes just seconds to do correctly. The time that you're gonna spend if there's a mistake is uh, way outweighs any, any little bit of time that you need to do the, uh, do the time on. We all recognize that there are times when we're hurried, that there's a uh, emergency or urgent uh, urgency to a procedure or, or a surgery that we are about to perform. But we have to remember that again, those are the times when we're probably and potentially more likely uh, to make a mistake. And so we want to caution against uh, dropping something as important as, as, uh, as these um, safeguards simply in the interest of time. The alternative can be catastrophic for all involved. I think once you've been through an experience like that or had a close call in an experience like that where you've caught uh, the mistake before it happens by utilizing the universal protocol or the, or the timeout, um, that's when you create the believers. That kind of mistake would have mistake would have uh, you know huge emotional consequences and professional consequences too. I mean these things there are things that will follow you throughout the rest of your career if there is a mistake like that. So while some physicians' perception might be that the risk of that happening isn't very high, the consequences are profound. But as a physician, both emotionally and professionally and potentially even financially, a mistake can just be catastrophic. So it's not worth it. We do a timeout every single time to make sure that we're doing the right procedure on the right patient. At the end of the procedure and before anyone leaves the room, there will be a final debriefing. This includes confirmation of the procedure that was performed, checking the labeling on all specimens for accuracy, including reading the patient's name and specimen out loud, identifying any equipment concerns and correcting them before the next case, and finally, addressing any key concerns for post-procedure care and planning for a safe handoff.